Pierre Scurrendor Fur, Wikipedia article audio. Pierre Scurrendor Fur was a French film director, a screenwriter, a writer, a war reporter, a war cameraman, a renowned first Indochina war veteran, a cinema academician. He was president of the Académie des Beaux-Arts for 2001 and for 2007. Biography In 1967, he was the winner of the Academy Award for Documentary Feature for the Anderson Platoon. The film followed a platoon of American soldiers for six weeks at the height of fighting in Vietnam during 1966. Pierre Scurrendorfer was born in Cameliers of a French Alsatian Protestant family. As Alsace was a territory contested and annexed in the 17th, 19th, and 20th centuries by both France and Germany leading to the Franco-Prussian War next World War I, his forefathers chose to remain French, even though they lost all their belongings. Family his maternal grandfather, who was an 1870 veteran, volunteered in the French army in 1914 at the age of 66 and the rank of captain. He was killed during the Second Battle of the Aisne at Cheminde Dames. His father was the director of the Ancy Hospital and died shortly after the end of the Battle of France where he was injured. Early Life he met his wife Patricia in Morocco, she was a journalist for France Soir. They had three children, actor and screenwriter Frédéric Scurrendorfer, director and producer Ludovic Scurrendorfer and actress Amélie Scurrendorfer. From Mariner to War Cameraman Pierre Scurrendorfer died on March 14, 2012 in France. He was 83. From Prisoner of War to War Correspondent During World War II, Skurrendorfer lost his father and was not doing well with his studies at school in Ansi. In winter 1942-43, he read Joseph Kessel's epic adventure novel Fortune Curie, which changed his ambitions, he wanted to become a mariner and travel the world. Writer and director In 1946, he spent his summer as a fisherman aboard a small fishing trawler in the Borgneuf-Enretz Bay, near Pornic, Pays de la Loire. From this experience he would later direct the in, The Fisherman Shot in Vietnam, an Iceland fisherman. The following year he went back to the Pays de la Loire region and embarked on a Swedish cargo ship at Boulogne. Reception Critical Success Awards Fine Arts Academy In 1947, on board a merchant navy coaster, he sailed for two years in the Baltic Sea and North Sea. This experience would later find echoes in Seven Days at Sea, The Drummer Crab, and even in Above the Clouds. From 1949 to 1950 he left the sea to fulfill mandatory military service in the Alpine Infantry's 1-3 Bataillon de Chasseurs Alpins based in Chambéry and Modane, Rhône-Alpes. The Alpine Infantry would later be the title character's corps in the honor of a captain. Young Skurrendorfer had realized he was not born to be a mariner, but he did not want to be a soldier either, thinking he would be wasting his time. What he wanted to do was filmmaking. As he failed to enter the television and cinema industries, he began photography instead. One day as he read a L.E. Figaro article about war cameraman Georges Cole, killed in action during the First Indochina War, he decided to try his luck in the service Cinematographique des Armes. In late 1951, he volunteered to become a war cameraman for the French army and was sent to Saigon, in French Indochina. 
Their corporal Skarendur Fur met and became friends with Service Press Information War Photograph Sergeant Chief Jean Parad, who took him as his protege. Skarendur Fur's first SCA production was a nine-minute short documentary First Indochina War Rushes that would surface 30 years later on screen in the honor of a captain. In 1954, his friend and superior Sergeant Chief Parad asked him by telegram to join him at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu and he dropped with the 5th Vietnamese Parachutist Battalion. As a result, a pranked Corporal Chief Skarendur Fur celebrated his 26th birthday in the midst of the 57-day siege. He filmed the entire battle for the SCA but after the French ceasefire and the defeat, just as the other soldiers destroyed their equipment so that it would not be captured by the Viet Minh, Skarendur Fur destroyed his films and camera. This event was later depicted on screen by his own son, Frederick, in Pierre Skarendur Fur's 1992 docudrama Dien Bien Phu recreating the battle. At the end of the battle in 1954, he saved and secretly hid six SCA one-minute reels which ended up in Roman Carmen's hands. After the battle, on May 7, 1954, he was captured and sent to a Viet Minh re-education camp. During the march to the camp, following Jean Parad, he tried to escape with paratroopers commander Marcel Bigeard, but he was caught. Parad vanished though and has since been missing in action. In prison, his life was spared at the insistence of Roman Carmen, the Soviet war reporter who directed all the main sequences illustrating the battle, from the Viet Minh raising the red flag over General de Castries' S bunker staged a few weeks after the siege, to the French Union POWs column marching from Dien Bien Phu to the re-education camp, that are featured in. During this time, Carmen had some friendly meetings with Skarendur Fur, they spoke about their job, and he revealed to the French prisoner that he had found his reels and had watched them. Carmen kept the reels though, so as a result the only footage covering the battle is from the Viet Minh's perspective. Carmen's own work has been watched all around the world and has even been used in the Western media. As an example, Peter Batty's 1980 The Battle for Den Bien Phu documentary is largely based on the footage from Vietnam. Skarendur Fur was released by the Viet Minh four months later, on September 1, 1954. On the battle's 10th anniversary, in Paris, Skarendur Fur was invited with Bigeard to comment on the Viet Minh footage, including segments from Vietnam, which were broadcast on the French public channel ORTF for the first time. After the First Indochina War Skarendur Fur left the French army and became a war reporter photographer in South Vietnam for French and American news magazines, Paris Match, Paris Press, Time. Life, Look In April 1955 he left South Vietnam to return to France, stopping along the way in Hong Kong, Taipei, Japan, Hawaii and San Francisco. In Hong Kong, through the AFP News Agency, he met Joseph Kessel, the adventurer, World War I and Free French World War II aviator, war correspondent, reporter, and novelist whose fortune career he had admired in his childhood. Over dinner and a long Kesselian night with a lot of alcohol and even a little bit of opium, Skarendur Fur narrated his three-year adventure in Indochina to Kessel who was impressed. Soon they parted, but with the promise to keep in touch in Paris. In Hollywood Skarendur Fur became an apprentice on a movie for 10 days, thanks to his connections with Life magazine, but without a green card he was eventually forced to leave. Back in France, he signed his first important contract with Path Journal and two weeks later he flew to Morocco, 
where the French Algeria anti-colonial rebellion was being emulated. He became a war correspondent, filming the riots for the French audience, Morocco was then a French protectorate. There he met Patricia, a journalist at France Soir, who later became his wife. In 1956, he resigned from PATH, whose representative threatened him, You are leaving us? So you'll never do cinema again, because we are huge. At this point Sker and Dorfer was confused with his young career, the major path bringing him back to the situation he experienced in 1951. As he narrated his Hong Kong meeting with Kessel to his fiancée Patricia, she convinced him to contact the one he regarded as an historical monument. Kessel was actually searching for him since he had a film project in Afghanistan, The Devil's Pass, and he wanted Skarendorfer to direct it. Kessel wrote the script, Raoul Coutard, a first Indochina war photograph veteran was in charge of the cinematography on his first film, Jacques Dupont assisted Skarendorfer with the direction and Georges de Beauregard produced it. In 1958, he married Pat, Patricia, the journalist he met in Morocco in 1955. In 1959, Pierre Lazareff, founder of the newspaper France Soir, asked him to direct a reportage about the Algerian war for his Cinque Colonies à la Un TV show. Thanks to Lazareff he later returned to Vietnam in 1966 and made his acclaimed The Anderson Platoon for the ORTF. Later in 1991 he came back to Dien Bien Phu and recreate the battle in a self-titled epic docudrama in the fashion of Torah. 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 In which his son Frederick played his own role as cameraman. The actual Vietnamese army was used to play the role of both the Viet Minh and the State of Vietnam National Army fighting on the French Union's side against the communists. Meanwhile, men from the French 11th Parachute Brigade played the role of the French paratroopers. In the 20 hundreds, his latest productions consist of the 2003 novel The Butterfly Wing and Above the Clouds, the theatrical adaptation of his 1981 novel Up There. Pierre Scarandurfer received acclaim in international short and feature film festivals. As a writer he won multiple festival, academy, and military awards and prizes, including the Prix Vauban, in 1984. Filmography In France he is famous for his 1977 three-time César award-winning L.E. Crab Tambour, based on his French Academy Award-winning self-titled novel. His first success was in 1965 with his Cannes Film Festival Best Screenplay winning the 317th Platoon. Both films are based on his experience in the First Indochina War. He is most known abroad, particularly in the United States, for his 1967 Oscar-winning Vietnam War BNW documentary, The Anderson Platoon originally made for the French public channel ORTF's popular Cinque Colonies à la Un monthly show. It earned him an Oscar, an International Emmy Award, a Red Ribbon Award at the New York Film Festival, a BBC's Merit Award and an Italia Prize. Pierre Scarandurfer was elected at the Académie des Beaux-Arts Section 7, Artistic Creation in the Cinema and the Audiovisual Field, Seat number 4, on March 23, 1988, replacing Guillaume Gillet. He is president of the Academy des Beaux Arts since 2001. Skrendorfer was primarily influenced by epic adventure novels, notably Joseph Kessel's Fortune Curie. Kessel wrote The Devil's Pass he co directed with Jacques Dupont. In the late 1950s, 
he adapted on screen two Pierre Lodi novels, first Iceland Fisherman then Raymunko. Following his 1992 motion picture Dain Biefu, Skrandur first spent three years working on the screen adaptation of his favorite writer Joseph Conrad S. Typhoon. The script was ready and the filmmaker started location spotting for shooting but the producer didn't find enough money to cover the high production budget and so the project was eventually cancelled. Young Skrandur Fur was also inspired by Hollywood movies he watched instead of going to high school class. In the 317th Platoon, there's a running reference to Michael Curti's Charge of the Light Brigade historical movie. In 2004, Al Express journalist asked Skrandur for his favorite movie, Akira Kurosawa S. Ran. Military photograph Jean Parad was a big brother for him he was three years younger and the most important person he met in Indochina as well as an inspiring character model. Feature Films His own experience as a mariner, a Vietnam veteran and a globetrotter is a strong inspiration in most of his works. This is obvious in The Drummer Crab but the most autobiographical work is Dain Biefu, where his elder son Frederick impersonates him. Feature Documentaries Short Films Short Documentaries Bibliography Novels French actress Aurora Clemencine in The Drummer Crub plays a role in Apocalypse Now's French plantation chapters connecting the Vietnam War with the French experience in the First Indochina War. Essays During the production of Oliver Stone's Platoon, Stone, who was also a Vietnam veteran forced his cast and crew to live like an actual platoon in the jungle, it was the very same technique used by Skrandur for 21 years earlier in the 317th Platoon. Produced in 2011, Pierre Skrandur Fur, The Sentinel of Memory is the first feature documentary about him. Directed by Raphael Millet, it is a CO production between Nocturnes Productions and the Institut National de l'Audiovisuel. In it, Pierre Skrandur Fur revisits his life and career, with a strong focus on the impact that his experience as a war cinematographer for the French army during the Indochina War had on him. Inspirations and Influence His Inspirations His Influence Film on Pierre Skrandur Fur